24 hours ago, he wasn't even in the running, but on Thursday, Hassan Diab was appointed Lebanon's new prime minister and given the difficult task of leading the country out of its worst political crisis in decades. Dear Lebanese, our efforts should focus on preventing the collapse and restoring confidence and safeguarding national unity by consolidating bridges of understanding between all Lebanese people. Political and security stability is a priority today and it is a cornerstone for the protection of our country. Five years ago, Mr Diab served as education minister in Ajib Mikat's government. Now he's promised to be a unifying force and has asked the country to bury its divisions and give him a chance. Not everyone is prepared to do that. Many see him as part of the old political order they want overhauled. We want someone that resents us, you know, and is, uh, how can I say, is not related to anyone from all the parties and all the politicians in this country and doesn't belong to the old sectarian uh, regime, you know. So, uh, and the idea is that we've been 60 days on the streets and we, our demands are very clear. Lebanon has suffered from nearly two months of often violent and disruptive street protests over government corruption, spiralling inflation and a dire economic situation. But there are those who believe Mr Diab can succeed. Lebanon is suffering serious monetary and economic pressures and risks a social explosion. The current social revolution may lead to insecurity and instability and we all have to help Diab. He is a technocrat and specialist and everyone should understand that. The former university professor was not elected unanimously. The large, influential sunny bloc led by the former Prime Minister Saad Hariri did not support Mr Diab or nominate its own candidate. He was backed by the predominantly Shiite Hezbollah alliance. The media in Israel has already described Mr Diab as Hezbollah's man and this shows that as well as dealing with Lebanon's pressing domestic issues, he must also juggle the interests of outside powers such as Iran, Syria, the US and Israel which have all played a part in the country's political instability. <laughs> Hours after Mr Diab accepted the nomination, people were still out protesting, although in fewer numbers. But in sunny areas of Beirut and Lebanon's second largest city, Tripoli, there were reports of roads being blocked and tyres being burned. Mr Diab will begin talking to all parties this weekend, but it's clear that not everyone wants to listen. <laughs> There's still a lot of talking to be done before Hassan Diab is able to head a new government and that process can still take months. But the question is, how will his nomination translate for the Lebanese people and will it be enough to stop the violence and the demonstrations? Tony Bertley, Al Jazeera, Beirut.